Good morning and welcome to worship. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. We deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join us in singing, Meet Us Here. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The first reading of Isaiah. There are no other gods beside God. The word of the Lord does not fail to come to pass. We can trust in God, through whom Israel and we are redeemed. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Psalm, teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God with all my heart and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes, but you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to the servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading, Romans. For Paul, true spirituality means that we experience the reality of the spirit, which enables us to pray as God's children. Keep us in solidarity, creation, and gives us unseen hope that God will liberate us and creation from bondage to death and decay. So then, brothers and sisters, we are de debtors, not the flesh, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. 
but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with longer, with longing, with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. When So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not grow good seeds in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, explain to us the parable of the wheat in the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Weeding is a gardening task that I have very mixed feelings about. Usually, for me, weeding is not much fun. Usually, it's uncomfortable. There's bending or there's getting poked. If you don't time it right, it gets really hot to work out in the hot sun. Sometimes the weeds are stubborn and they don't want to come up easily. 
But sometimes, if you get the right setup and you're comfortable, there's actually a peacefulness to weeding. The kids for sure will leave you alone. And if you're upset with someone, pulling out a few weeds could be somewhat cathartic, am I right? And when you're done weeding, you can actually see that you've made a difference in your garden. In our parable for today, Jesus again uses the imagery of planting seeds in a field in order to illustrate what the kingdom of heaven is like. But this parable is a bit different than last week's. Last week, the sower scattered seed wherever and whether and whenever. <clears throat> he scattered the seed wherever he wanted to, and whether or not it grew was dependent on the soil in which it landed. This week, the seed that gets planted is in a prepared field, very deliberately and very carefully, knowing that what comes up is going to provide the farmer with his livelihood for the year to come. But then, unbeknownst to him, an enemy comes along and plants weeds right in the middle of the good stuff. It's only when the crop begins to emerge that anyone realizes that weeds have been mixed in with the wheat. And as soon as they see it, they tell the master who determines that an enemy has done this. The workers or the household slaves are quick to want to solve the problem and they want to pull the weeds up right away and quickly. But the sower knows that if they do that, they will also pluck up too much of the wheat. They will have to wait until it's all done growing, and then during the harvest, they will separate the wheat from the weeds. Weeds are invasive. They come in different shapes, in different forms, but what I've noticed is that once they start growing, they can easily take over the entire field or yard and they can be growing in all sorts of places where we don't want them to grow. The weeds that Jesus is talking about are the weeds that get planted in the good soil with the good seed. And as Jesus explains, putting the weeds there is the work of the devil. He spells out that the weeds are the sons of the devil. But maybe it's more helpful to think about the weeds being a product of the devil's work. Now, I know that we are mostly Lutherans and we don't really like to talk much about the devil and the presence of evil in the world. But friends, the things that the evil one can do to mess up in the world is very real. The amount of weeds that he can spread around is mind boggling. And if we're really honest, sometimes the devil wants to spread the weeds in us. The devil's whole purpose is to keep us or draw us away from our relationship with God. Jesus closes the gap between our sinful nature and God's holiness when he took sin upon our himself and died on the cross so that we could have life. Now we are saved from the clutches of the devil. And really, we have no need to fear the power of evil. But that doesn't mean that the devil has learned his lesson to leave us alone. The devil continually wants to keep us away from God. So that's where the weeds come in. The weeds get planted in us. They show up in a whole variety of ways. Maybe they are the whispers of self-doubt and insecurities and fears. Maybe they are the drive that we have for power and wealth and things. Maybe they are the desire to have, um, to be right and first for everything. Maybe it's just our pride in not being able to show weakness or reliance upon others. Maybe it's stubbornness or intolerance of others and change. Or maybe it's the deep, dark pit of depression and despair. For some, the hold of addiction chokes out any sort of life that God would have for them. The weeds are invasive, 
and the evil one knows exactly which but buttons to push in each one of us to try to get us to not be growing as wheat, but instead to grow weeds and choke out the abundant life in Christ that God wants us to have. But sometimes the weeds don't stop with each of us individually. Sometimes they grow even further beyond ourselves as we take ourselves and our weeds and put them out into the world. We can take the weeds anywhere, and chances are we don't even know we are doing it. They can spread to our workplaces. They can spread within our families, our friends, and yes, even into a church. I was once part of a congregation that was very healthy and doing well, and they were growing and flourishing beyond what anyone had expected of them. And someone came in and started to pit the staff against one another and started to make promises that weren't his promises to make or to keep. He set up situations where conflict and attack kind of took over as he gave certain people more value than others. He forced quite a few people out, many left. And the church stopped growing and it stopped flourishing and it very much seemed like this person really was an invasive weed in the field that had been planted with good soil and good seed. And I'm sure that as the work, as the good work of this church diminished, the enemy, the evil one, the devil, was the one who was the most happy about it. On a lot of levels, this parable is a cautionary tale to us as individuals and to us as a congregation and maybe even to us as a society. As children of God, we know that we are set up to be wheat in the field. But we are in a field where lots of weeds are right there with us. And perhaps it's better to think that maybe we are actually a mixture of weeds and wheat. Because the wheat and the weeds are growing so closely together, sometimes you can't tell them apart. Martin Luther said that we are simultaneously saint and sinner. We are both wheat and weeds. Therefore, it makes sense as to why the master of the field is reluctant to pluck out the weeds right away because he knows it's just not that simple. The person I knew in that church situation I was describing, he wasn't all bad. Others really liked him, and he showed care and concern for their needs. In each of us, while we know that we ultimately belong to God, we also know that we can choose to let the weeds grow and diminish the relationship that each of us desires to have with God. Or we can choose to pursue things like prayer, studying scripture, being in healthy relationships, doing the best we can with worshiping online, giving and acts of service that will help us grow into being healthy wheat. You can listen to the lies that the devil feeds you, or you can listen to the truth of God's love and God's grace that is for you. In times such as this, when so much of creation seems to be groaning in pain, it may be hard to figure out just what is wheat and what is weed. Part of the discerning and the part of learning the difference and discerning what those differences are is listening carefully to the Holy Spirit as it guides and it leads us. Part of it is looking to scripture to see if what we are seeing in the world lines up with what Jesus is teaching. And if it does, then it's likely to be part of the wheat. If it doesn't, then you just may be encountering weeds. My friends, trying to root out the weeds is not a fun job. In fact, it can be hard, back-breaking work, especially if there are deep roots that need to be dug up. But if there are weeds in us, 
It's time to get them out. We know that we already are good wheat. God has made sure of that. So whatever needs to be plucked up and burned, God will do that with us and for us, carefully, with forgiveness, grace, mercy, and love. And when it's done, we will know in the future what to watch for. And we will know now that we will be growing in faith, hope, and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gent gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, torn apart by our fearful and selfish ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of song, we thank you for the gift of music and the way it lifts up our hearts and minds. 
We thank you for Brittany and Becky and for the last five years that they have led us in song. We pray for all of our choir members as they find new ways to come together to sing your praises. Bless and encourage all of us who long to sing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair and who suffer in any way. Especially, we pray for those who need your healing power, Bob and Trish, Jan, Tom, Mike, Roxanne, Suzanne, Wilma, Rolly, Al, and others. We pray for those who need your healing from COVID-19, for those who help the sick, and for those who mourn, especially Sue Borton's daughter-in-law as she mourns the passing of her sister. Bless and keep them in your care, and bring your healing and strength to us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places, and saints close to us. Gather, with, gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us join together in praying as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Before you go this week, I have just a couple of announcements to make. First of all, I wanted to let you all know that I will be out of the office this week. And should you need anything, please feel free to call and let Elise know. Uh, she will be able and help and willing to assist you with whatever you need. Also, next Sunday, our gar communion in the garden service will be a little bit different. We will not be having communion, but we will have some prayers and scripture. Uh, if you want to gather for prayer and meditation, you are welcome to do so. Uh, and that way you have an opportunity to fellowship with one another as well. Also, I just want to alert you that there is a Zoom uh, link in your bulletin for our Hot Topic conversation on July 30th. Um, that conversation will be talking about Bishop Eaton's sermon and other things from last month. So if you are interested, please plan to join us. As you go this week, may you know that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. to God. May you all have a blessed week. See you next time.